Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vicente Lofmitz. I am the AccuColor team lead for Europe, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar with Giovanna Ricalo, all about how to make fine art photo montages. We're really excited to get going. And uh, Giovanna and I are really, really excited to already see the turnout and uh, really get into the content for today. Before I get started, there's a couple of keynotes. We have two small gifts for all of the participants today. The first of which being that there will be a 10% discount code on all of the AccuColor monitors, which means the PD and SW monitors uh, for our European participants. We'll be sharing that later on in the webinar and also in the follow-up email. Uh, the other gift that we'll be having is that at the very end of the webinar, Giovanna will be sharing her raw files with all of you. So there are some raw files which Giovanna will be editing today during the webinar. You'll be seeing during the live editing session. And you'll have access to exactly that same file yourselves if you want to play around with it afterwards, if you want to edit it and follow along with what, uh, with what Yovana did during the webinar. For those of you who don't know, uh, as mentioned, we have the 10% discount code. So what is it actually that these monitors do? Well, for those of you who don't know, BenQ has two lines of monitors built for artists. We have the PD line, which is for designers, and you have here on the screen, as you can see, the SW line, which is for photographers. You'll notice here on the right side as well, you'll have here links that you can access at any time to, to check out, to, to, see the, to see the different monitor lines that we have. These monitors are really built from the ground up to cater to the needs of designers and photographers. And one of the most important features of any, photo, uh, of any monitor for designers, artists, or photographers is that they are color accurate. If you're a photographer and you're taking a picture of a flower, of a rose, of a landscape, of a castle, of a model, whatever it may be, you want to be sure that the colors that you're seeing in front of you on set are the same that you see when you go to your monitor afterwards for retouching or for editing. With BenQ monitors, you have the assurance that you have the most color accurate monitor possible when you're working. Beyond that, there are a host of different features and a bevy of different features really built just for designers and photographers to make your workflow the smoothest that it could possibly be. And uh, we always encourage our participants, don't take our word for it. You can always check online for reviews. We have a, a really f um, a lot of luck and really a lot of privilege to be working with a lot of incredible artists, much like Yovana, who's been using BenQ now for, for quite a number of years now. So we really encourage you on that. Beyond that, you'll also see on the little links on the side, we also have uh, an offer for one year free of Pantone Connect Premium, which is open to all users of BenQ, PD, and SW uh, series. And that one year free is really one year free. There's no strings attached to that. On to the main point of today, which is about Yovana. For those of you who are not familiar with Yovana's work, she's really built up an incredible online following with her work. Um, Yovana is... Um, Really, really, really very passionate about, uh, about to work and has worked with dozens, if not over a hundred models at this point, really on a host of different, uh, different projects for clients, for uh, big companies like Disney Bridal Weddings. And uh, she has really this unbelievable ability to work with these massive teams. If you've seen some of her behind the scenes footage before, you can see that it's not just Giovanna taking the pictures and editing afterwards, but Sometimes there's six, seven, ten people that are involved with the sets, with the costumes, with everything that she does. She's also a complete natural talent when it comes to working in, uh, in workshops and teaching in webinars just like this one and working with, with very large teams. So we're really incredibly lucky to have her here with us today. And um, yeah, without further ado, I'd love to call Yovana to the stage. Uh, we will be having a Q&A session at the very end for you to ask all of the, the questions. But uh, we'd like to wish all of you a really a fantastic webinar today. Vicente for such a great introduction. Uh, sorry, I have some troubles with the microphone, but everything is uh, okay now. Um, thank you, Vicente, as I said, uh, for uh, introduction. Um, I don't have to mention how much I love holding webinars and sharing the knowledge with you guys. And um, welcome for today's webinar. I'm very excited because today we will talk about how to make fine art photo montages. This is a very special topic for me because I really enjoy making photo manipulations. I love to composite the image. I love adding different elements into me. This is something I really enjoy doing. I don't say I don't like taking photos, I really do, but I really love editing. And I think this is uh, much more of 50% 
editing them to take in the photos. Um, so uh, before we start, I would love to see at what level are you at photography? So are you doing it professionally as a hobby or you're not just started yet? As you see, um, many of you, you're doing as a hobby. Yeah, it is so okay. Then the prof professional. Okay, let me see. Just starting. This is so good because, uh, as Avicenta said, we will have our raw files uh, prepared for you so you can practice as long as you want. Um, <clears throat> so lots of you said hobby. This is okay also. Haven't started yet. Hmm? It is changing a little bit. Okay, let's see. So most of you said hobby, then professional, just starting and haven't started yet. Great. So it is totally fine to start it now when you're prepared. So uh, today we will talk about, let me see the content first, introduction to photo manipulation, integrating different elements into the image, adding smoke and color effects, before and after, I will show the photos before the photo manipulation and after. And at the end of this webinar, we will have a question and answer. So make sure during this webinar to uh, ask as many questions as you want, and we will answer at the end of this webinar. So let's start. Introduction to photo manipulation. Uh, here we have an image before and after. So many things are happening before the magic happened in Photoshop and the software, editing software. Uh, I really love the whole process before because lots of things are happening um, in the, behind the scenes. Um, and this is only showing how much you can uh, do in photo manipulation. And, uh, and if, if you have a clear idea, everything is possible. So photo manipulation, what is it? Um, so uh, everything that you are adding to the photo, everything you are removing for the photo, if you add one element, if you add more than one element, this is a photo manipulation. So if you're using an editing software, you are doing a photo manipulation. If you only added the photo or uh, if you only uh, capture the photo, this is not a manipulation and upload on a photography website or social media, it is totally fine. But if you change something in software, then it is a manipulation. Uh, I remember when I was starting the photography, we didn't have artificial intelligence before. Uh, it's, it wasn't like this 10 years ago. And to me, photo manipulation was very interesting. I was playing in uh, editing software so much. I was uh, finding the right tools, so what's working for me. I was editing the whole day and it was very interesting and uh, I was editing the whole day. So when day started and when day is ending, I was <laughs> I, near the computer and I was like, yes, yes, this is so good. So uh, I would love to change the uh, elements and adding new elements to the image. So everything that you're changing, it is a photo manipulation. Most important tips about manipulation. This is also so much important to know because when you're going to the set, when you um, write down the whole project, you have to know some things before you doing a manipulation. The first thing is how much you have space in the photo. So make sure to think as much you have, the more space, the better, because if you have enough space um, be, um, behind the scenes and on the photo, it is much more easier for you to add elements or remove elements or to add many elements you want. If you have a tiny space, if you don't have enough space in the photo, then it is not so good because you don't have, uh, you don't have to play that much in uh, Photoshop afterwards. Uh, if you want to take portraits, make sure to focus maybe if you want to, uh, where you want to add those elements. Do you want to add it on the face? Do you want to add it on the body? Do you want to add around the model? So make sure to think where you want to add those elements. It can be on the face, body, and all three things, but uh, make sure to think where at the first place. <clears throat> then the second tip is uh, to choose the right location. So every location that is um, tidy, like the forest where you have more greens around the model where you don't have clear background, it is all also not a good idea because you will um, mix those elements. Uh, maybe some elements won't be visible in the photo, maybe uh, some, somebody won't see anything, uh, you will not finish the whole story. If you have a more clear backdrop as a sky, as a sand, uh, is a grass, uh, but if you have um, grass and sky, it is all, uh, always a plus. Like on this photo, you see there is enough uh, white space and if you put the red rose, everything will be clear and everything will be very well visible and you have a story. Um, if I had here a black background and many details around, we didn't, uh, we, 
uh, won't have an uh, image like this at the end and the rules won't be visible, the whole story will be unfinished and everything will, won't be so clear. So make sure to think about the backdrop and where you want to add those elements. Then uh, the third tip is make sure to think about all details you want to see. I know maybe uh, lots of you who are starting with photography don't know what elements they want to bring to the location, but make sure to maybe start with only one prop, maybe like this one, a red rose or maybe red balloon, and then add it to the Photoshop. Um, make sure to connect it with the story. And if you in advance think about what details you want to add uh, in editing software afterwards, it will be easier for you than if you only have a model and then at the end you will think, oh, what uh, detail I should add. Maybe I had to think about it before we started uh, photo shooting. So this is also very important. The next tip should be to have one more person to help you on the set because if you're doing everything alone it will be much harder because you have to hold those uh, objects, you have to prepare the model, you have to take in a photo, so uh, make sure to bring a friend, a family member or maybe use a tripod if you want to uh, be only yourself at a photo shoot, but make sure to bring a friend. It will be more interesting, more challenging and more exciting to have somebody by your side on that day. Be open to adapting your idea. This means that, um, especially myself, I'm that type of the person who love to plan everything to details. I'm perfectionist. I love to plan idea and then um, do this on the photo shoot. But if you have one idea and when you transfer the photos in editing software and immediately you awake a new idea, it is also okay. Uh, make sure to be open about it. Uh, it happened to me a lot of times when I have one idea and when I opened the uh, editing software, it was like, wow, this will be much more easier for me to add and uh, this will be more interesting to the story. So uh, make sure to be open to new things and make sure to think maybe uh, to have a plan B by your side. Uh, think about the elements. Uh, I already said this, but Thinking about the elements uh, makes the whole project much easier for you. Uh, if you know what elements you want to bring to the location, uh, then uh, you will have uh, almost the finished story at the photo shoot. Uh, you will have only to edit this image afterwards in editing software, what, uh, how we will do it today. I'm very excited about it. Uh, and you don't have to uh, think about and have a headache uh, what elements you want to download on, as a stock photos and uh, to have the same light. We'll talk about this later, but think about if you don't have five elements, think about only one element. Use your tools. Uh, this was very trouble to me when I was starting with photography because uh, I was watching lots of YouTube tutorials uh, from other photographers who are using some tools for editing. And I was uh, following these tools and I was using these tools, but something wasn't working for me. Um, I didn't like uh, those those tools somehow because, you know, it wasn't like it doing uh, it doesn't do the job for me. So this is why I was experimenting a lot. I was uh, using uh, many tools in Photoshop and that is why I created not my tools, but, you know, uh, your tool that is much uh, working much easier for you. So this is um, uh, this is what I'm saying, because lots of people are following uh, tools what other photographers are using and maybe these tools um, won't do the same thing like they are doing for those photographers. If you're using maybe only one tool, maybe brush, and you will do 10 things, but the other photographer will, will do with a brush only one thing. So make sure to use, take advantage of the tool and make to, uh, I will show you today what you can do by using only one or two tools and it will be much easier for you. Uh, I remember also fre frequency si si situation. Uh, this tool we are using for retouching the skin. Um, I didn't like at the beginning this uh, technique because we it didn't do the job for me. So uh, this is why I'm not using. It's not the fine art style. It is more for beauty concepts. So make sure to think what tools were best for you, and you will see how much uh, it changed your mindset. Be measured in your approach. Uh, so have a measure, don't over retouch, don't little retouch. So make sure to have a little good measure because if you over retouch image, if you over retouch the face, if you over retouch all these elements into the, into the photo, uh, people will think, oh my God, what is happening? And so many things around the model, what is the story? Uh, you have to be very precise how much you want to add. It is okay to play with it, make sure to spend seven days just to play with elements, adding in Photoshop, removing from Photoshop, seeing how much you can do in 
in the in those seven days and make sure to say yeah this is my measure don't over touch it uh, i know many people in my uh, in my workshops uh, when they uh, meet new tool they are like oh my god i will now use this tool forever wow well, let's go deep into this tool so uh the face looks unnatural like a doll so make sure to have a measure it is very important uh before we go to the next slide i want to uh, ask you do you love to uh integrate the elements uh in editing software or you want you love it to have it like uh, like on the set so uh, i would uh, like to ask uh, one Pool before we move to the next slide. When do you edit? Do you also integrate the elements or only do retouching? So retouching, I mean adding only tones or do you love to adding the elements? I'm very excited about it because I love to do both. There is, uh, I do both photo manipulation and retouching. I have done only retouching so far. It is changing like this. <clears throat> Let's see what will be at the end. I think it will be half half, but let's see. Okay, so more I have done only retouching. This means only toning, and I do both. Good. I would I love to hear that. I think both is totally fine because if you do manipulation and if you do uh, toning, this is the finished image. But it is your style. Uh, here we have some examples, so before and after, as you see, um, yeah, uh, as you see before, I always prepare the model before and the whole scene to have it after in editing software. Uh, <clears throat> here I wanted to uh, tell a story where they are uh, filled with pressure in their life and they're feeling like a balloons hanging on their heads and they are full of stress somehow and uh, we don't see their faces because they're uh, you know uh, they're much stressed so this i know that i will tell this story before and that is why i use this bicycle um, i use their pose before and i use the small balloon and after in photoshop i make them larger so uh, it is uh, this is why uh, i t tell you that you have to prepare everything for this photo shoot i needed around one hour just to take photos of them and then uh, two hours just to edit the image so um it is much quicker than if you plan afterwards. On the, se uh, on the second photo, we have, I knew that they will be in the water, uh, sitting on the chairs, having this uh, butterfly crown around their, f their faces, and I knew that I will add more butterflies around their faces. I don't know what exactly uh, direction the butter uh, butterflies will go, but this idea comes when you start adding the image and when you see what you can do. I don't like the horizons, uh, in the um, background at the second image. So this is why I added a totally blank horizon and I make the image more uh, with interesting scene and more clear scene. Uh, integrating different elements into the image. So choose the right elements. Um, as I said, like on the, the this photo, I choose a red dress and red flowers. Um, I wanted to tell a story where she's speaking her own flowers in her garden. I loved that it was snowing that day and it made such a beautiful contrast. The black and red goes re uh, very well on the snow. And I was very happy because we had snow that day. And uh, these flowers goes very well with the dress because she has petals on her dresses. And this is a finished story almost. Uh, so this is why if I choose some maybe red chair, I won't have that type of the story. So make sure to choose the right element just to connect with the model, with the scene, with the location, and uh, with the dress, or if you're using the outfit, make sure to combine those uh, colors or uh, details in one place. Create your own images. This is such a lifesaver because you have, you can do so many stuff by creating or your own images. This means that you're not using stock images when you're adding the photo, but making your own images. Here I added two images of a fireplace and this tree. So I can use over and over this tree and making upgrading even more uh, in my photos uh, because this is my image. I can use it as much as I want. Uh, I don't have to buy it. Uh, um, I can create it and use it uh, in photo manipulation. So this is my uh, very uh, tip for you. Uh, if you are going through park, if you are walking, make sure to take as many photos as, as you want. Maybe mm, like the contrast one where you have only a tree, maybe a smaller details like the flowers. 
maybe a clouds, sun, uh, whatever you want, and you can add your own images into the Photoshop because I have a special folder where, where I collect all my own stock images. I don't have downloaded, and I think it is much uh, quicker. It is, uh, you don't have to uh, pay for the copyrights. You have your own images, and, and I think this is such a lifesaver. A same light. This is why I also create uh, these images, especially if they are made on the same day on the same photo shoot because if you create it on the same day uh, you have the same light like on the photo shoot it is much quicker to edit uh, that way than if you maybe take the photo in the morning and edit um, uh, in the evening because we don't have the same light i remember uh, i had one photo shoot and i didn't create my own Im images because i forgot it was a uh, time ago and i waited the next day for the same hour just to create this because we uh, I would have the same light like on that day when I was having the photo shoot. So make sure to bring all details you want to include on uh, in photo manipulation. Make sure to capture those details um, and then you can use it in editing software. Create elements do it for sure. This is what I, I, I was talking. Um, maybe you don't have to take lots of elements. Make sure to bring maybe uh, butterflies, flowers. Uh, you can uh, use a paper and maybe you can burn that paper just to take a flame, uh, photo of a flame. This is also an interesting idea. You can add so many things uh, later in the editing software. You have, uh, you can create only small flame, a big flame. You can uh, create the whole image in flame. So make sure to uh, take as many photos as you want and make sure to uh, capture it in RAW because uh, it saves details and it, uh, it saves, uh, it is a large file. You can edit the contrast, you can highlights, edit afterwards. So don't uh, create JPEG images. This is uh, only a must. Having a story, at the beginning, I said that everything is a great connection. So you have to think about the details and location and scene to have a story. You don't have to uh, mix those elements. If you want to create a dreamy uh, photo shoot and if you uh, create a dreamy photo shoot in an urban area. This is not a good connection story because it's, it's, you know, it is a contrast. Maybe it will look good for somebody, but I think it's not a good uh, story to tell. So make sure to think uh, to connect the story and to think about those um, details. Uh, now I want to uh, ask you one more question. Do you uh, play with composition? And how much you want, uh, you love to play with composition? Do you love to play uh, a lot? Or uh, do you want to leave it composition like it is in editing? So yes, I like to change in editing or, or no, I prefer to keep the Im image as it was on the set. So I know this is um, mixed feelings on this one, but I would love to hear it. Um, if the change in composition is good for a story, I will change. Uh, if it's not, if there are portraits, I think I will leave it that way. So this is how I think. But I would like to hear your thoughts. So, hmm, let's see. Many of you said more than half. Yes, I like to change it editing. No, I prefer to keep it images. Yes, it is also okay for bo both. If you love to change it, then change it. If you know, then you can keep it. I love these results. Great. So uh, today we are editing these elements. We are editing sunflower, balloon, and smoke. I want to add one by one element and telling a different story. So you will see when we start editing and um, it will be very exciting. I'm very happy about it. But before we start editing, um, I would love to talk a little bit about uh, equipment. So equipment is very important when it comes to photography. So uh, to capture a good photo, you need creative tools. Um, camera is also, um, if you want to capture a photo, you need a camera. So having a good camera is great, but you can practice storytelling if with a smarter smartphone or camera on a budget when starting. As I said, you if you have a great eye, if you see details, then every camera can look good. Um, but uh, with professional camera, you can, you know, you can change the level, you can uh, see more details, you can uh, create more colorful image and everything is much more visible with a professional camera, but you can start with any camera uh, at the beginning. 
Then the second one is lenses. So lenses are much more important than the camera because you capture, uh, you, you think about the background with lenses, you see uh, if you want to add more blurriness or less in the photo with lenses. So wide angle or not lenses are much more important than the camera. Prime lenses are a must. Um, so if you're doing a photo ma manipulation, make sure to use the wide lenses because in that case from 24 to 50 millimeters is okay because in that case you can um, add, uh, you can uh, capture more space into the photo. If you're using uh, 135 millimeters, you have to go very far to capture the whole scene. So make sure to use um, wide angle uh, lenses. The next thing is additional equipment such as lighting, reflectors and backdrops. Um, slowly while you're having a camera lenses you're slowly upgrowing your equipment by choosing the backdrop for the studio reflectors if you love to take creating a photo shoot uh, inside i think outside is much more uh, challenging because uh, the light is changing uh, all the time and you and you have much more um you have you, you can experiment much more on location but um, lately i really enjoy doing uh, photo shoots inside so this is changing. Editing software such as Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro for videos, tablet for editing. This is also a lifesaver. When I was uh, bought a tablet, it is much more precise when I edit the image. And I, uh, this is a suggestion for all of you if you don't have a tablet to buy one because you can edit much quicker and much more precise. And I think uh, the most important thing is also after the camera, the photography monitor, because if you see true colors on the set, then you have, you must to see the true colors on the, after in editing the image in this software, because if you had a good professional monitor, I remember when I was starting the photography, I didn't have a professional mo uh, monitor and it was very hard for me to have the true colors on the monitor because when I was transferring the photos from PC to, to mobile, it was totally different. Uh, colors and I didn't have this in mind and I didn't see these things when I was editing the image and I think this is so important for people and for clients to see the exact colors. So currently I'm using the BenQ SWV321C uh, monitor and uh, but before we start, before I say more about it, I would like to ask you um, how do you edit your image with? I am very interesting to see, to hear that. So, do you use a professional mo uh, monitor? With what do you edit your photos with? Professional monitor, regular monitor, or laptop? I, I don't like to use laptop because uh, you don't see, uh, it is uh, smaller and uh, you don't see all these details and for, especially for photo manipulation, it is so much important to have a really good monitor. So I'm very excited to hear about it. So, Ah, it is changing. Many of you said, m more than half said laptop, regular monitor, then professional monitor. <gasps> I didn't expect this because I was thinking that, oh, it's changing still. Let me see. So laptop, regular monitor and professional monitor. I have to say that this is um, like, this and this like earth and <laughs> because if you're using a professional monitor everything is much more quicker like you're using tablet like you're using camera not a smartphone so i think it is a must to have a professional monitor um i would like to say a few words about the monitor i'm currently using and it is a bank us wb 321c monitor uh but before we start i would like to have uh, to mention that you have a discount code for pd and swb series uh, it is a uh, discount and you have a 10% discount. It is valid until uh, 22nd of June. Uh, as I said, it, it is uh, for p photographer monitors for PD and SWB series. Um, I would like to say a few words about the monitor I'm currently using and SWB 321C monitor. Uh, I really love, uh, it is uh, life changing for me. As I mentioned at the beginning, I was using a regular monitor and I have lots of troubles. I didn't see the right colors. I didn't see details. Um, it wasn't calibrated. I, uh, back then I didn't know anything about uh, calibration, but when I 
have when I was starting working with this on this monitor, uh, first thing I noticed are the true colors. For me, this was very important because what I see on the set, I want to see in editing software. I want to see on the monitor, and this monitor really showed me. Like every BenQ monitor, I love to see true colors. So and details. It is 4K, 32 inches. It's a little bit bigger, but it's better to have a big monitor than the smaller because you see lots of details and uh, 4K resolution. So um, for me, details are everything, especially if you're doing a photo manipulation. This means that sometimes we have even these small details which you have to zoom in. And if you have a large monitor, like 32, it is almost like a TV. Uh, you have all details and you can see it like this and you don't have to go really close to the mo monitor. Uh, when I was editing photos before, I was editing the whole day and night and I was I was very tired and going and looking like this. And this is why I wear sunglasses. I was looking all these small details. And now with this monitor, I can see it very good and edit the image like like a person. Uh, the next thing what I really love about this monitor is um, matte finish so reflections are bothering me every time when i was editing the image before because i love to edit during the day and always near the window and doing do, do, uh, during the day we have lots of ref reflections going on the screen and i don't see any details so when i save the photo afterwards i see that i didn't edit it something so i have to edit re-edit again so with this monitor we have the matte finish and uh, you don't have any reflection when you edit and it is uh, such a lifesaver i love this thing uh the next thing is a hockey puck so uh it is uh thing where you can use it and you can change the color modes while you are editing. This is also very interesting tool to have. You, you can change the modes from RGB, sRGB and black and white mode. So uh, this is uh, things I really love about it. So I would, uh, I'm very excited for the new SWB272 uh, monitor, which is coming uh, very soon. And uh, we have uh, SWB272Q, uh, 2K resolution and SWB272U uh, money uh, for 4K resolution. So we have two types and I'm very excited um, about, about, about this one to test it. So, okay, guys, I think we are just ready to edit the image. So now I will share the screen with you and start editing. So I prepared uh, the model. I prepared the elements, so we will slowly adding the elements. So the first thing I'm adding the photos. So uh, we need location within a model uh, before we start adding. So before I um, put the image in um, Photoshop, I'm using Adobe Photoshop. I love to do a little bit of tweaking here. So light is okay, but I would love I love to add in raw tab a little bit more. So I will exposure go up then highlights a little bit down i'm love it to have a clear sky around it um in order to see more details in a dress i would love uh, to put shadows a little bit more up also let's see temperature hmm. it's okay like this but maybe more yellow because the dress is yellow but i would I don't do a lot of tweaking, but a little bit. If the image is too dark, then I will make exposure up. Okay, I'm very excited about it. So I will open the image. When we open the image, I love to unlock it. And I would love to change the composition. Why I love to have a square format? Because it is good for selling uh, prints. And it looks much more nicer when you have a wider space and it it looks much nicer, pleasing for the eye. Uh, more vertical format, I would love to use for portraits. Uh, in order to change composition, I will go to image, canvas size, and I will go for pixels, and I will type the bigger number. So it will look like this. Enter. So we will have on two sides um, empty space, and we will fill it with this type. So I would love to expand a little bit uh, this background because the subject will look smaller and the background a little bit wider and everything will uh, look more uh, fancy. I will use rectangle and marquee tool and I will select this area until the dress. It's okay to have 
Darko, I will remove him afterwards. But it is okay to have, um, to not touch the dress because, because if we touch the dress, we will expand the dress also. We will edit copy, edit paste, and do it like this. Not too much because you see it will be a little bit, but I will go maybe like this. How much you prefer. For me, it's okay. But if you want to expand more, but be very precise because we have here sky and sand. Uh, sky is okay to man ma manipulate because in that case, you can go wider as much because we have, <coughs> sorry, only one color. But in sand, we have those details. So make sure to be very clear. If you're in a forest, you don't have to go very much because all the leaves will be expanded. But you will see how we will delete it also. So the next side, we will again edit copy, edit paste, serial T, and we will expand it like this. You see, if we go, we can go like this, but I, I prefer maybe to go halfway like this, and I will click OK. Uh, as you can see here, we also have empty space. I love, I don't have to have uh, as many layers, so I will. I love to merge visible always, to don't see layers, but if you want, you can leave it. Um, I would like to now fill this emptiness around the model, so I will go like this. I love to, um, put the subject in the center because in that case I can mani mani manipulate for the both sides. I will press enter and I'm very uh, happy with this composition so I will flatten the image once I'm happy. I will again unlock the background because I want to edit more. Um, I love where uh, she's standing on the sand but I would love to have it like um, fantasy feel like she's standing on the globe sand. Uh, I will do it, I will make like this, this part, the sand, and I will, uh, I want to duplicate this layer, because if I will make the sand as a globe, then the details will be all mixed and uh, messed. So uh, in this case, when I duplicate the image, I can edit and bring back those details, uh, you will see now. So make sure to duplicate the image, then go to the filter, liquefy, and we will make it as a globe. Make sure to pay attention to size and to this forward bark tone, only those two elements. If you have larger uh, space to edit, then use um, la uh, larger size. You see, I will show you. It's okay to mess details because we will bring them afterwards. You see, we are making it a little bit circle it's okay, you see how details are going down and everything looking not so good, but we will fix it afterwards. Make sure to only focus on the shape at this moment, not details um, uh, under this shape, you see. You can make any shape you want, but I love to have a, a globe look shape. It is okay, and it is always um, interesting to have a sky and one more element because it is more interesting. Uh, you can edit a lot of things in this way. I'm happy like this one, and I will press OK. Maybe it will take more time just to remember uh, because uh, every time you are using the large image and every time you are using this tool, it takes lots of time to save it. So it is okay to wait a little bit. Um, <clears throat> So make sure to think about fixing those elements after, afterwards. This means you duplicate the image and then you can delete this and I will show you how you can delete. I'm so happy because um, we prepared raw files for you and I'm happy to see how you will edit this image. You don't have to edit this way. You can uh, put uh, the elements in a different position, but I'm happy to see and make sure to send me the photos if you play with it. So we are still waiting. It takes so much time. As the bigger size is of the tool, then it takes more time. Just more time. 
I love to use this liquify tool because uh, with this tool you can make the more volume in the hair, you can make the dress larger, but make sure to pay attention to the backdrop, background because you can always duplicate the subject and delete afterwards the background and bring back the detail because you will mess everything up if you, uh, especially if you are editing the image, if you don't have sky, if you have a forest, you will see the forest is woo, going like this. If you have some lines, if you have some, you know, breaks, you will mess everything up. But if you duplicate the image, you can bring everything up. Uh, just more time. Let's see. I love this tool so much. Make sure to uh, ask questions during this editing because we will answer it later. We are taking just more time and then we can edit. Uh, I don't I don't know why it's taking so long. Ah, yes, here we go. <laughs> So here we have before and after. Now I will use the layer mask because I want to bring these details back and I will use the brush tool and I will pay attention to hardness. It has to be around 50, then the size and flow. Okay, you will see now. You see, I'm bringing back details and make sure to think about. If you want, if you don't have to, smooth this make, make sure to hardness to make it uh, if you more uh, if you want to have more precise lines make sure to put the hardness up i need this larger okay you see it be very precise first i will delete this and afterwards i will zoom the image and then make sure to do always like this in order to see what else you have to bring back I will now zoom in and I will make even more smaller this size because I want to be very precise here. As I said, make sure to use your own tool. These tools works for me. If I uh, don't, I don't have that this will also work for you. Make sure to experiment, but I love to use tool in much easier way. see like this it's okay if you um, yeah like this and make sure to always zoom out to see if you something forget no it's totally fine so I, i'm happy with this and i will do this <sighs> i don't like those two things so i would uh, use lasso tool and i will like this and shift and backspace and make sure to have content aware and press OK. Wow, in one click, we'll, we remove it. It um, don't work for every uh, detail, just to have to be very precise. If you have a clear detail like the sand, like the sky, it totally works because it uh, removes these things. So I'm happy with this shape. Uh, now I will just do a little bit tweaking of her hair. I love to add um, volume into the hair and I will just uh, make more lines precise of her body. So I will you see here we see a little bit of dress. So I will make sure to think about the size. So for smaller changes, go for the smaller size. For bigger, go for the bigger. You see, oh, a little bit I want to add this. I think, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with it. So now uh, I want to add first element. It will be sunflower. Why sunflower? Because um, sunflower is, you know, is connects with the, with the dress and also tells a story that I want to show uh, show that she, uh, the sunflower is grow, uh, growing uh, behind her. Uh, and we have to grow as a human beings also like the sunflower. And this is why I took this photo the same day. So this is uh, when I was talking about uh, taking photo of elements. I will do just a little bit of tweaking like the first image. It's okay like this. And I'm very happy with this. It's okay to open. Now I want to add 
this and the whole sunflower into the image. So first I will add this thing and I will use the lasso tool and make it like this. You can add with the greens, but I, I don't like, I, I would uh, love to add only like this and edit paste. You see, we have this, we will select now and it is a little bit, um, let's say, I'm, I want to make it smaller. I will just do like this. And I will put somewhere here. I will zoom in because we are, we have to be very precise and we are doing the same thing. So we are making a layer mask and we are do, uh, using the brush tool. Make sure to think about the hardness and the size. For this one, the size smaller the better because you, you have to zoom in a lot. You see, and just going like this, be very precise. You can go even smaller if you want. If you are unsure where the face is, you can always go for the opacity and do like this, you see, to see where the face, face is ending. And if you want more smo uh, smoother, make the hardness less. Because um, if the hardness is more um, up, then it will be very precise and harsh lines. But you have, you can, um, you will have a lot of tweaking and it takes time. Uh, this is why the tablet uh, is okay, because it is very much precise if you're doing this line. It's like you are writing on a paper. Make sure to delete all these space around to not have this. So when I'm closer to the detail, then it is smaller. Oops. I will, uh, with black, we remove things with white we are bringing back, you see, I'm now bringing back. And it is always a play with these two. With the black, you are removing, deleting. With the white, you're bringing back. If you want to delete this also, smaller, you see like this. It takes a lot of time. So at the beginning, it took me around four hours just to edit one image, but I was enjoying so much Okay, uh, I don't care about this one because I will put sunflower uh, on it. Okay, so let me see. Mm -hmm. Make sure to bring back opacity. You see this we have here also. So I will use white just to bring back. Make sure to don't have space and make sure. Okay, let's see a little bit to see here yes i'm happy about it let's see like this i will do again okay now huh when i'm happy i also love to merge if you want to edit this you can uh, leave it like this but i love to merge when i'm happy about it so the next thing ah we have here. Oops. Sorry, I forgot that I added here <laughs> sunflower. Yeah, the next thing is this part. So I will, oops, I will select whole area. Then again, edit copy and edit paste. You see. But now you can leave it this way, this size. You can make it even larger. This is up to you. You see, you can add this. You can add the whole sunflower and make it yeah, like this, but it's up to you. I would love to see um, how you will edit the image. It would be very interesting and apply. Let's leave it like this and we'll see. Now we have to delete again this area and we will click the layer mask with the black. We are deleting with the white. We are uh, bringing back. So make sure to go flow and hardness up and size. I would love to make bigger size around and with a smaller I go when I'm uh, into uh, mo uh, more closer. It takes time. So uh, when you're doing with the flowers, maybe a lot of you will, will say now, I don't want to do with the flower. I, I, I don't want to edit the flowers because it takes lots of time. Yeah. With these petals, you will see how much time. So you have to go very close 
Woo! Sorry. <laughs> I press it like this. Oops. Yes. You go very close and then make small size and then do this. As I said, with a tablet is much more easier to edit. If you make some mistake, you can bring black. Uh, you can bring black. Black. You can bring back with a white. I love to do it like this. You can go even much more closer, but I think if um, you don't have to zoom the whole photo, then it is okay to do it. Like, you see, when we are closer to here, we make it even smaller. You can use it like this. Okay, then we are deleting this part. And we have to think about the size. So it is okay to not be precise at the beginning because at the end you will do more tweaking. Make sure to think about, you see, those tiny elements around. We will do now bigger and later we will go into much more deeper around the petals. So make sure to do clicks all the time because if you remove with uh, pressing uh, left click on the mouse the whole time, then if you mess something and you go back on history, then it will br bring back all um, thing you uh, deleted. So make sure to, you see, if, if I delete only this and go, then if I bring history back, you see, I will bring only this tool. So make sure to do lots of tweaks. It takes time, but I really enjoy doing this. This is why uh, it is also um, okay to uh, take a photo and on the same day, because you don't have to care, um, think about the details, you, you're doing all this stuff on the same light and so on. So this is very uh, picky. Oops. You see, when we add it, I bring back here these details. Smaller one, yes. You have to think about and make sure uh, make sure to think about the light because the same light on that day is much more. I'm very excited to see how you will add the image. Because uh, everyone has different vision. Maybe somebody you, uh, will see the sunflower differently than me. Maybe you will put the sunflower somewhere else, maybe uh, as a dress. It is the same technique, so don't uh, think how you will do it, because if you follow these steps, I think you will do it in the right way. But it takes time. Uh, we have another techniques also, but you can use the uh, color modes here. We will do it also. But with this, the only thing is, um, I will show you just to, you know how, uh, uh, what you can do also. You can delete all these lines. Let me show you. I will just minimize a little bit the photo. So I will delete all these and leave it just a tiny bit around. You see, if we put hardness down, it will be, you see, much more in flow down. You see, it's not a harsh lines. It's, a, it's much more smoother. 
because uh, we took a photo the same day and it is the same light. I can do this also. I will show you. Wait a second, just to make it more smoother. And make sure to rest your eyes while you're editing <laughs> and blink many times because if you're only looking, you see now I by propose I didn't edit. Uh, but if you click the adjustment and curves and if you go a little bit more up, you see how it is changing this spectrum because it was taken the same day. It is not the white like is it so you have to you don't have to go very deep into the image you can uh, change the color this way also but i will oops i will go for it more we have just more time to edit see we just Put the brightness a little bit up and you see how much we solve the problem because we took the same day this image but make sure to think about the edges also the edges are also important i will just put the hardness a little bit up Let's see, uh -huh. here, no, I put the hardness down, make sure to think about the white and black color while you're editing and make sure to go even more. We, we don't have three hours now, but make sure to be very precise when you add it and to think oops and make sure to use the brush tool to mix you see here I want to bring back yes and go even much more into the flower Okay, make sure to play some music in the uh, while you're editing because it will be much more interesting. It takes so much time, especially if you have some detail, sunflower like this one. But this is why I chose this image because it will be much more interesting to you and you have lots of things to do and uh, you can do so much practice with this. Make sure, uh, make sure to pay attention to the down part, no, it is okay. you see, make sure to go before and after, I love it, make sure to think, maybe you can change the sunflower, you see, you uh, click the sunflower, then adjustment, hue, saturation, you see, you can change the colors also, oh, how cool is that, but I will leave it yellow, because it goes very well uh, with the model, when I'm happy, I will merge visible, because I don't like no I will not because I need okay I will leave it like this um, now I want to add a smoke effect because I want to show that um, she's growing as a human be being so I want to show her flame and uh, flame I will show uh, as a smoke and it is the same color um, as a sunflower and her dress so it is her uh, aura I will go for the file, open, then I will use this image. You see we have here smoke. I made the smoke the same day. So it is on. We will now see how we will use it. I will make it like this, you see. And then I will see how I will add it the best into the image. So add it again like this and i want to go out of her so i will i will uh, press it like this so we will see afterwards uh go layer mask again and uh, because i don't want harsh lines here i would put the hardness oh one more thing of the sunflower 
wait, 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 wait a second. We here have to delete. Wait a sec. Oops. What happened? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, something for, uh, happened. Okay, so we have smoke. Again, we will press like this and make the hardness a little bit down because I don't like uh, harsh lines and uh, size bigger. And flow, uh, I don't like, um, I would love to uh, everything be smooth, smooth. So I will choose maybe around 30. So you, you will see now. See how it's slowly deleting things. And if I put even much more smaller, then it will be much more smoother. So don't care about um, edges now. We'll now focus only on this to look smoother. So I will go for 11 and hardness a little bit down and size bigger because no, like this. Maybe. Uh, it, everything is practice. So as much your practice you're doing, I want to leave maybe you see, make sure to think about, you see, uh, here we have some uh, details, flowers on her dress. So make sure to think about it also and delete it. Uh, the smaller number in flow, it is uh, more smaller, you see. Make sure to have a um, shape of the smoke, to not only stick to the image. Make sure to think about this. You see, you can go like this. You can make it uh, little. You can make it much more. You see, like this, or maybe smaller. This is what I'm talking. Uh, I have the white background as the sky on that day. So if I put it smaller on the dress, you see the white here. So make sure to think you have to delete it afterwards. But if you put it this way, that won't be visible because it was taken the same day and we have the same color. Let me see how I will. I will delete just a little bit around here. I love to do this with the hand because I think it changes a little bit perspective. Sometimes I go, uh, I love to go uh, away, far away. Okay, I'm happy with it. You can also change the color of the smoke by going to clicking the smoke image adjustment and hue uh, saturation, you see, blah, 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 blah. it's amazing. But I, I would love to have the yellow. And now you can have only sunflower or only smoke. Okay, and the next thing, I'm happy about it. So I will merge this thing. I will now add the balloon. She can hold the balloon. Wait a second, before, I would leave it like this again because I want to show you balloon. Balloon is also you have to be very precise. I will uh, use it this way because balloon is okay. Okay, I'm selecting. I love this behind the scenes <laughs> photo. Okay. I don't know why this line is here. So I will just save this image and reopen it again because I don't know what happened in Photoshop. Don't care about this step now. Ah, oh, now it's okay. Okay, so we are uh, edit copy, edit paste with a balloon. And now she can hold it or we can put this and maybe put the balloon here, you see? But I uh, saved this, uh, you leave it, this layer, and you, you, you will remove it. But it can be the balloon also, and not the flower. But for this one, I will put it to hold it. So I will make it smaller, like this, and on her hand. 
they're much more slower. But I think um, I will show you after. I think uh, balloon is uh, too much in this photo, but I want to show you how, uh, what things you can do and how many elements you can add. So um, this is a third element. And again, we will use the same technique. We'll change about the size, hardness, because balloon is very picky and the flow, especially this rope. I will first go like this around and then I will go closer to balloon. Balloon is a really uh, headache, but you have to work with balloons also. In order to learn, it's better to pick harder elements than the easier one. Okay, I will also go size, my hands is hurting, <laughs> size small. And then ooh, think about lines around the model, around the model, oh my God, Ar around the balloon. Be very precise and think about the hardness because if you uh, went very smooth around the balloon, it will be uh, messed. Let's go like this, okay. We are doing a good job. Go like this. It was it, because it was taken the same day. It's I don't like this part, so I will remove it. Whew, and now the rope. A real headache. have to be very precise but maybe we will do it much quicker now but make sure to go all the close up and think about we will bring back this but we will use it like this make sure to if you are buying balloon make sure to pick a uh, bigger rope, <laughs> not this tiny one. We will delete a little bit this, and because we want much more smoother, whew, in her hand, make sure to flow to make it and hardness. You see, like she is somewhere here, and you see here we have also white lines go up go up i will delete also this because it's not photogenic it made for birthdays but we are here celebrating art okay and now my eyes let's blink okay now we will bring back Just a little bit. I will see a uh, second balloon if I add it. Okay, you see. She can hold balloon, but I love, um, you see, uh, it's too much in this photo. But if I remove this, I can add this balloon by changing also the direction of balloon and maybe put it this way like if, if, if we want to focus more on mis mysterious but you see it's 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 up to you how you will use the balloon you can use it also the way the same way like you used uh, the sunflower but you remove this also or you she can hold it in her hands so everything is up to you okay we will leave it like this and we will add again the sunflower. So I'm very happy, but I will now just remove this uh, because I'm very satisfied with this one. Uh, it is so important to know how to save the image. So we will go for the file, save as, and choose where you want to save it. JPEG, Adobe RGB, name it girl sunflower, and click it save. And make sure to go for high quality 
and press it OK. I am very happy with this one, so I will go for it. So you can combine, you have a uh, sunflower element and the girl, so you can combine this uh, element uh, in editing software as much as you want. So now we will go back to presentation. Just to see where this is. Okay, uh, we have just two more slides to tell. Okay, so here we have before and after. What is important? So, um, some tips: uh, duplicate the subject. This, mean, this means that um, playing with subject is also interesting because you have one person but duplicated. It is a really interesting mindset, and you can use you can take photos of yourself, you can take photos of a friend, and, and you have ten friends in the photo or only one friend. So uh, this is also interesting thing to play. Uh, you can duplicate the same subject you have uh, with a sunflower girl and make it maybe a reflection thing. And also you can add effects. Um, that means weather effects. You can add the snow, you can add the rain, you can add the sun. It is more, it is also interesting to have not only the objects into the photos, but also this type of effects. It brings so much to the photo. Like you see on the, it was taken in my garden, but with the snow, it adds so much different uh, dimension. Okay. And at the end, we have play with elements. This means uh, choose as many elements as you want and bring to the location and take photos of it. Uh, take photos of details and because it is so interesting to have your own images, stock images, and to collect it in a folder and then reuse it over and over it and change the colors, change the shapes and change the styles. Think about the story. Uh, be very precise how you combine the elements. Don't mess with the elements because you see, you want the story at the end and not the messed elements. And enjoy the whole process because enjoying the things you're doing, taking the photos, editing, um, this is the most important thing. Okay, uh, now I will answer your questions, but before that, I would like to call the center back. Thank you so much, Giovanna. So uh, as Giovanna said, we are not done with the webinar yet. We're going to be going to the Q&A section now. So feel free in the bottom right to ask all of your questions. I see you already have a couple people asking questions already. But for those of you who will not be sticking around for the Q&A, we just want to say thank you to for, for attending. And uh, if you enjoyed today's webinar, we really have on a very regular basis webinars just like this, but about pretty much any topic that you could, in, that you could imagine. Whether you're a designer, photographer, an artist in general, you're interested in portrait photography, landscape photography, if you're interested in more editing, uh, if you're interested in 3D work uh, as a designer with Blender, whatever the program, whatever the software, whatever the direction that you're interested in, we're always regularly hosting webinars just like this and with incredible speakers just like Giovanna that uh, you had the, the chance to, to hear from today. As said, we have here the discount code, which you can use until the 22nd of June. You'll also be receiving that in the follow-up email. You'll also be noticing here on the right side, you can download the files, the exact files that Yovano is editing on today. You should have a little download option there. And if you'd like to check out any of the offers that we have, including our, our monitors and also our upcoming webinars, feel free to click here on the, the right side as well. So with that being said, we'll now move on to the Q&A. Great. So we had some questions already from the very beginning. Um, Ada asks, uh, said the following, often when I use my own images to take elements from them, I find it hard to remember what I have in general. Does this happen to you as well? Uh, I didn't un understand. It's hard to remember what I have in general. Mm -hmm. the, uh, she thinks so I believe, that... Mm -hmm, I, I believe what she's saying is that when she uses her own images and then if she starts to remove too many elements, she starts to feel that maybe it's a completely different image. She starts to forget maybe what the original image even looked like if she removes too much. Uh, as I said, um, it's up the whole idea. So if you have, um, uh, if at the end, the image looks re really good by removing these elements, and if it's telling a story, I think it is okay to remove the elements. But if you think it is not uh, the, the finished image, then don't remove all the elements. So uh, everything is about the story, so and how you want to say it. 
We also, again from Ada, is a question about, I'm usually scared to add elements because I'm afraid it will look too fake or that the shadow light won't fit. So she's asking, how do you, how do you manage that to not make yeah, the image uh, look too fake? This is so important because uh, when I was starting with photography and uh, when I was downloading the stock images, I was uh, finding very hard to find the same light, the same shape, uh, you know, and to add into the, my image. I was taking the nights and days just to find the right image. So that is why I started uh, taking photos of my own images on the same day and I bring these details. It, it doesn't have to be on the same day. You can tomorrow or afterwards, but it is much more um, easier to easier. edit after uh, and make sure to do it in a row because afterwards you can edit the highlights, you can uh, add the shadows, you can add the contrast and you can change it in uh, Photoshop. But th this is a, a, a special topic by itself. Mm -hmm. Sarah is asking, are you planning any courses in Serbia anytime soon? Yes, uh, I'm planning in October, in fall, so I'm very excited about it. Uh, you can uh, write to me on Instagram or through email, so we, we can discuss it, about it. Yes, I should also mention, for those of you who are not yet following Jovana, really recommend, you can see her on the links on the right side that will take you right to Jovana's Instagram page that you can then follow. Thank you. Uh, we have another question asking, why do you have two versions of Lightroom? And can you also process a photo in Lightroom? Uh -huh. um, I don't use Lightroom very mm, often, but it is older version. I don't know why it's remember on my PC, but uh, I love to do just a little bit of toning. And when I have to select all the images at once and then um, um, ex, uh, no import, but uh, export the images. I don't like Lightroom that much. I love to use Adobe because I love to do uh, ma uh, ma manipulation often than just toning. Mm -hmm. Christina is asking, she says, first of all, thank you. And she's asking, could you share with us some references for color correcting? I think what she's asking for is if you have maybe some resources or some, some ways to teach to learn about color correcting. Yes, yes. Uh, she can uh, write to me and also uh, we can do maybe uh, in a future uh, webinar about the color toning. It will be a very interesting one. Mm -hmm. Anya is asking, is 30 years too much to start with photography? So I think no. she's asking, is it too late to start at 30 no, years? No, I think if you have 60, it, it, it will be also fine. If you are very cheerful about photography, if you want to learn, if you want to, I think no. Um, but I think it's, it is so important to follow the trends and to practice as much, because if you uh, forget something, if you are not into trends that much, I think it is, uh, you have to be... Uh, present all the time and people will forget you if you're not like you have to practice and learn new things mm -hmm. actually Yovana, i think that would be quite interesting maybe you can uh, share a little bit about how your personal journey was to start with with photography because you didn't always do photography no uh i study law so i didn't think about photography at all um I started law in photography when I, when I discovered Flickr. It is a photography website, you probably heard about it. So I love their uh, photo manipulation. I love the fine art images because uh, for me back then we didn't have, it, it was 10 years ago, but it looks like I'm 60 now. <laughs> uh, it looks like um, when I'm talking, but back then we didn't have um, this uh, improved um, software. And uh, to me, manipulation was, wow, uh, discovering. And uh, I was playing a lot with the tools and uh, this is why I choose this style. I, I uh, tried all the styles, but I really like the fine art and the portraits because uh, we can express the freedom as much and I can tell a story. Mm -hmm. But yeah. One of the comments here says is that they'd like to see more and, and for a future webinar to see more detailed editing of the model. And I think that actually is a, a nice organic question to ask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can do, yeah, the editing in the future also, but I think uh, also is uh, manipulation, uh, how you can combine the elements, how you can add the elements is also, um, I don't know how to say, but it, it is important, yeah. Vicente? I can hear you.
Vicente? Yes, sorry. Ah, we yes. have. Where I'm calling from Vienna today, and we unfortunately have quite a lot of rain today, so I think uh, sometimes they, the connection fell out. But uh -huh. um, another another um, another comment we have is about wanting about learning how to combine two images together. So instead of you taking an original image and adding elements to it, really taking two two images and putting them together. Do you have any uh, comment? Uh, I didn't understand. Uh, on the same day. No. So what um, what I think the person was referring to was that instead of taking, for example, the photo that we have today with the model and adding the flower, adding the uh -huh. balloon, it's almost like taking two two images and putting them together, sort of like 50-50 in terms of elements, in terms of... Um... So I, I, I think what the person is trying to say is maybe you have a woman with a car and then you put it in a completely different landscape from a different photo, for example. Uh, on on uh, my photo, or they have uh, another photo? No, I, I believe this is something they would uh, they would like to learn. That's it's something that they'd like to see in the future. But maybe you have some insight on that. Uh, I um, on I I think uh, it it is the same technique like this one. You can um, select the car, mm -hmm. or you want to put uh, into the image. And then you just uh, have to do a layer mask. It is so important to have a layer mask and how you are deleting and how you are bringing back the details and also how you are changing the colors onto the image. And it, it is so important to have the same light, so. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, if anyone else has any more, has any more questions to ask, uh, Jovana, one more question that I, uh, that I wanted, to, wanted to make you. You've been using now Thank you for three or four years now, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. How how do you or, feel that the uh, how do you feel that the change has been for you using BenQ now as opposed to what you were working with a lot, before? A lot, especially with the colors and the details. Um, to me, is a life changing, especially because I was using the regular monitor before, and uh, switching to this one, it is I really because I see uh, difference and it is uh, changing so much while you are doing. Um, it's like you are doing uh, editing on the set. You know, you see the same details, and it is, it is so important to see the right colors. I think this is the most important thing when you edit the image. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah, that really makes a really makes a massive difference. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's about all the time we have for for today. Uh, wanted to say again a big uh, a big thank you to everyone who who attended today's webinar. Uh, it was really great to, to interact with all of you, and I know that for myself and Giovanna, it was really very exciting to to welcome you all today. As said, we have here the discount code. You'll be receiving that in the follow up email very soon. If you enjoyed today's webinar, you can check out our social media for sure. Follow Giovanna if you if you haven't yet. As she has. If you enjoyed today's work, I mean, there's literally hundreds more examples of this, of incredible photography with animals, with dozens of different models, also in different countries with different backdrops. So I highly recommend that. And uh, yeah, I wanted to also say thank you, Giovanna, for always bringing so much passion, so much excitement to the, to the webinar as well. Thank you so much. And thank you for all for being here. Excellent. Then uh, everyone, thank you very much. We'll be leaving the webinar room open for a couple more minutes if you'd like to download the files or if you'd like to ask anything else. But uh, from all of us here at BenQ, we want to say thank you again, Giovanna, and thank you to everyone who attended today's webinar. And we look forward to seeing you at future webinars. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.